I am. It's a private member of the bill in relation to Irish water. And basically, it's an effort to tame the beast of Irish water, the beast that has become. And it's basically simple, you know, a couple of simple provisions. One is that there'll be full transparency and there'll be full access to freedom of information. None of this charade that's running around, these are questions and going to the ADO, talking here and how they get the answers. And the other one is, is that we have a specific ombudsman for Irish water. Because last year alone, there was a huge limited increase in uh, issues going to the ombudsman. So we need a specific ombudsman. And another main point is, is that we would have, uh, you know, some kind of insurance scheme built into Irish water. We take this week alone with lead issues for people in their homes. If there are issues arising from one way issues, there was a promise of course that was free from Irish water. And what they were talking about in the 70s now, with you and all our fees. I mean, that would be just those two figures alone for two hours would be more than most households would be expected to pay. So it would be a huge issue. Thousands uh, to repair and lay and repair bad services if wherever the lead issue uh, came up. And then, obviously, as well, that uh, main plank of it is that if it was ever to be uh, sold off, uh, as far as I uh, semi uh, public private partnership, any of that would have to go in a paper side to the Clear clarity in, in all these issues. I know, Mr. No, no shall or may be sold or may be considered or may have to be. I want clarity that it cannot be sold without the people signing it. Your constituency rival Alan Kelly is not accepting this, uh, this bill tomorrow. Are you surprised by that? I'm not surprised about it, but he was with him last night on a different occasion. He didn't say that to me, but that's fine. I didn't expect maybe they would. But look, he's a lot to learn about his. He said yesterday uh, that um, on, on TV and for, on, on Tuesday night that you know there, been, there would be a grant scheme for people with lead in their homes. So it was similar to the grant scheme that Minister Hogan announced for safety tanks a couple of years ago. 39 safety tanks were inspected in Tipperary. Yeah, might have the last to speak to their own. If you weren't inspected, you couldn't apply for a grant. And if you inspected and were, you know, only got a, a pass, a barely pass, you couldn't apply for a grant. So it's a fun job. And he's good at spin. And he's not much good at, uh, you know, sorting out the problems and issues. I mean, lead in the water is not a new phenomenon. And I, and I said it to Irish Water yesterday here. They bought a pig in a broke if they didn't know there was lead, lead um, uh, fittings. Walk down there to Grafton Street and see the works that are going on there for the last several months. And they walk most of it. Any, any excavation you think is cast iron and bullet. And that's all over the country. So I remember when I said this in history, uh, they bought a pig in a broke if they thought that. This Probably didn't just arrive now. Every town and village has an old scheme around um, uh, lead services. And the biggest issue that I have is that there's no transparency. You can't get answers. You can take the whole issue of sewerage, and the lads can explain their own counties as well. They haven't taken over anything to do with sewerage. They have taken it over, but they won't allow the local authorities to visit or to go into properties to free drains that were always done. Even though that there's a, a way leave, and they are a quasi public a pipe, the incubus gardens, but there are several people's pipes going through, through the one pipe. So it's a whole grey area, and literally the public have been pleased. And I'm afraid that we don't have something, a uh, kind of a scheme, an insurance scheme, that, you know, call out chat will become another cash cow for Irish water, and it will bleed the people dry. And Matty, there's been lots of legislation around Irish water, there's ministerial orders, there's yes, all yes, that sort of thing. So why is there a need for another piece of legislation and what will this do that the, all the rest hasn't done? Because it's, it gives clarity and there's three basic issues. I have uh, battled with Minister Hogan and battled, as my colleagues have, with the government regarding Irish water. It's regarded now as being under whole yes. These are three simple things. An ombudsperson specific to Irish water. Uh, a plebiscite, if there's any ambiguity, no, with no ambiguity, the people have to decide whether to send it off or not. Look at Erlingus uh, last week, if we want uh, 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 you know, a, a place to look at. And also then the fact that there's some um, solace for the families that they're not going to be fleeced if they have lead pipes now, but they have leaky pipes or, or rotten pipes, which they are, they only have a certain, all the old pipes only have a certain, you know, uh, limited period of time, 30, 40 years, and they'll damage the property. And, and leaks can be huge, huge damage. So the basic issues, and as I said, the freedom of information, no ifs or buts, the Jesus saying leave us questions, title over to the AV row. They came in here yesterday, and put Bally Cowan and myself, Deputy Cowan and myself were questioning them. And he said, they're political questions. Mr. Grant, I said, Mr. Grant, with all due respect, you're in a political house. I mean, they want to be playing this game, hide and go seek with the people, and plundering people's wages and waste packets who don't have the money. And I think it's time this building might refocus the government's mind away from the referendum, away from IBRC, all these issues are very important, but there's a distraction from bread and butter issues when people are trying to live and exist. And I'm talking about people who are prepared to pay 
and if for water that they don't expect it for nothing as well and they expect to have some bit of certainty as to where it's going no good sorry yeah, no good can i ask you as well uh, you're an independent is this a big issue um do you think will it be a big issue in the general election uh, irish water clarity all of that i think it will yeah particularly even in my own position in galway west uh, i was out at the weekend to see where irish water were actually doing work and it was atrocious the way they left the estates jobs incomplete people couldn't get into the driveways. People are very concerned. I think the big issue here is, at the moment, uh, with, regarding Irish waters, the charges now that's, that's in place, they are going to increase. That is absolutely without a doubt. Also, young people that get panic permission and uh, the, the development contributions. Now is a big issue is you have to uh, contact Irish water and you could be charged up to three and four and five thousand euro by Irish water to connect uh, into the water scheme. As I said in the doll, uh, when the Irish water has been set up, they have to get money somewhere, and that's what they're doing now is they're fleecing the young people that are getting canon permission and putting these exorbitant fees on them. So I support uh, Matthew McRae on this. I think he's raised very uh, important issues, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to voting uh, with them on Tuesday on this. Can I, can I just add my voice there? Uh, sorry, just a few can I so first of all commend my colleague Deputy Matthew McGrath in, 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 in bringing forward this legislation to try and, and reform the whole debate about water in the state and the way sections of Irish society have been treated. The big issue for me is that in recent days has been the whole problem of the crisis of lead in the water and the pipes around Dublin City, particularly on the north side of Dublin. This is a huge problem. Families are paying for a service and now they're going to have to spend another between six and eight uh, thousand euro on uh, getting their pipes repaired. This is only acceptable to me. But can I say finally, I just say uh, it, it's a great opportunity as well. You see, once again, independence for different uh, sections of Irish society working together in a sensible way on good legislation. Deputy, 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 uh, uh, to win it for his, the work that he's put into this excellent piece of legislation. Uh, he has pointed out huge deficiencies that was in the original legislation for Irish water, which was introduced to, to ram through the doll. Uh, and, the, and the week uh, uh, just prior to Christmas, when, when the dog was going into recess, and uh, it was really neglectful of, of the interests of the general public, and there was no safeguards built into it in many aspects of it, and, and, and people really are being fleeced for, for various charges in a time after seven years of austerity measures in this country, and I think it's time for the government to give due consideration to this bill <coughs> as being raised by uh, the, the Deputy Matty McGrath tomorrow morning, and uh, hopefully that we'll see the, the sensibility of all this. And uh, in, in, in variance of what they have done in the past, they have, they have ignored several excellent suggestions that we put forward and amendments, etc. So we, we hope that they'll uh, to, to change their, their, their actions and, and, and their, their, their previous uh, <coughs> responses to, to, to what we've been put forward. And it will be only rightfully so, and hopefully we'll, we'll achieve, the vote will be on next Tuesday. And uh, I, I'd be confident that uh, they will see the light and give uh, due respect to Deputy Muraz's uh, uh, amendments here and the new legislation. Tom, Maybe would this be a huge issue in your area? I mean, your area, most people would be paying their water water prices. Well, no, there's, a, there's, a, there's a major uh, uh, anti water campaign on the north side of Dublin generally at the moment. But the big issue for us at the moment would be the health and safety of the lead issue. And can I just say on that, I mentioned that earlier, it's not about yeah. people who are, people who are paying also, uh, that's why I'm putting this forward, this legislation forward as well. And people are happy to pay, but not the least. Not be asked for 170 euro an hour and 120 euro call out, and God knows when it ends up, because I need to know that an hour for a plumber, and a lot of good plumbers I work with are great people, an hour you won't get a toolbox open, and an assessment maybe in an hour, so that's what I worry about, the gravy train that may come forward. And in case you wonder about the timing, this bill was prepared by David in my office, I want to thank him, with some help from the bills office last um, October and it's submitted in, I moved it in November and submitted into the lottery system, so just my look will come out in this lovely, nice weather. So that's why, in case you're wondering why the timing, you have to wait in the lottery system, yes. which is, um, well, I welcome the system on Friday sittings, but the government, you know, uh, tomorrow I'm trying to ensure I have a quorum tomorrow. They don't even care for, care for a quorum. They won't have a vote on it then until Tuesday. They'll make sure they'll have the troops marshaled if they're going to oppose it, as Minister Kelly says. But Minister Kelly could do well to take a walk down Grafton Street and look into the holes and see what's going on on the ground and not his, uh, his spin and flipping the announcements of money everywhere else. It's a huge issue with the lead, the old pipes, the leaky pipes and uh, people's uh, own services within their houses as well. Tom and Noel, there's been a lot of discussion this morning about a, a new political party. Would you be enticed by a grouping of Roisin Shortall and Catherine Murphy, or are you going to stay loyal to Finian's new alliance? 